Hello, this is oxygen administration. I'm going to show you diff several different oxygen delivery devices, explain when they're used, and also how to use them. I'm going to start with the nasal cannula. This is a nasal cannula. It is your first line therapy for a patient who is stable and whose oxygen saturation is a little bit low, but not terribly low. So say for example, your oxygen saturation of your patient is 88%. We know that normal is 98 or above and that acceptable is 92% or above. So 88 is low, but not terribly low. So we would start with a nasal cannula. A regular nasal cannula can administer from 24 to 44% oxygen. The percent oxygen that your patient receives depends on their, if they breathe through their nose or some through their mouth and the rate and depth of their respirations. So we really manage the nasal cannula by using the liter flow and we measure it in liters per minute. So if you look over here, you'll notice that there are two flow meters. Oxygen flow meters are always green and they are connected to the oxygen at your facility or hospital with the green adapter. Oxygen is always green. Here in the hospital, at the Harper Hospital, we do not actually have 100% uh, oxygen flowing through our Harper Hospital. And so for demonstration purposes, we use this yellow flow meter. It says medical air on it. You will not see this at the hospital. You will use the green flow meter. So to hook up my nasal cannula, I start out with having my flow meter and then attaching an adapter. The adapter looks like this. Many people call this a Christmas tree because it is sort of shaped like a Christmas tree and it's green. When you're in the hospital, somebody says, get the Christmas tree, this is what they're talking about. It is the oxygen adapter. It screws onto your flow meter. And then here's my nasal cannula. I can connect my tubing directly to that adapter. And then I can turn on the flow meter. And if I want, say I want to start at three liters per minute, there's a silver ball there. I want to make sure that the silver ball is right at the line for three, like right in the middle. Then I check to see that the oxygen is flowing. I can feel it on my hand. And then I'm going to put the device on my patient. So when I put this on, you'll see that the prongs are shaped like this. It goes into the nose like this, not like this. So the prong should be facing in and down. So I'm going to put on my patient here into the nose and I would put it around his ears. His ears are a little small. It makes it hard for the oxygen to stay there. And then there's a little slide right here that I can adjust so that it fits properly and stays in place. As soon as I have this in place, only maybe a minute or so later, I'm gonna check his oxygen saturation and see if it is coming up with putting this oxygen on. Now, if I'm administering this oxygen at three liters a minute or more, or for an extended period of time, or my patient has complained about having a dry nose, I may need to use a humidifier. In that situation, instead of having this adapter, I would attach the humidifier. So here again in the hospital, we love to have um, nicknames for different items. This is a humidifier. A lot of people call it the bubbler. This will attach directly to my flow meter. I put it right here onto the flow meter. I'm screwing it in place. I attach my nasal cannula tubing. And then I turn the flow meter on. And as you see right here, it's bubbling. That's why people call it the bubble part. And so this actually provides some humidity so that as I'm administering this oxygen to my patient, instead of being dry oxygen, it's moist. So nasal cannula, remember this is your first line therapy. Your patient is stable, but their oxygen saturation needs to be increased. There are
There is also on the market a high flow nasal cannula that can administer between 44 and 65 percent oxygen and it can deliver up to 12 liters per minute. Um, that could be used if your patient needs even more oxygen. The plain nasal cannula you set between 1 and 6 liters per minute. A high flow is between 6 and 12 liters per minute. That's a nasal cannula, our first line therapy. This right here is a simple mask. It's a simple mask. This works very similar to the nasal cannula. I do not see these used in practice very often. You might use this if your patient is a mouth breather and the nasal cannula doesn't work very well for him or her. With this device, you're not going to use the um, humidifier or the bubbler. Remember that the nickname is the bubbler. So I'm unscrewing this and I'm taking it off. Putting our Christmas tree, remember our Christmas tree, or our adapter, we're putting that back on. So I'm screwing that in place. I'm hooking up my mask, my simple mask. I'm going to turn my flow up to these four liters per minute. I verify that it's running and then this will go on my patient's face. Put it on the face, make sure the nose clip is at the nose and then the elastic goes around the head. So this one is very similar to the nasal cannula. It can deliver up to about 44% oxygen. It will depend on the patient's breathing, the rate and the depth of respirations. As I said, I hardly ever see this used in practice. Patients don't like wearing a mask. They must prefer wearing a nasal cannula. Um, but you do sometimes see it in pediatrics, and you might on occasion see it with an adult. All right. The next device that I have is a non-rebreather mask and a partial non-rebreather mask. This mask, it's the same device, can be used two different ways. One way is with these flanges in place, it is a complete non-rebreather. And the way that it works is that I hook it up here to my flow meter, and I turn my flow up to at least 12 liters per minute, or maybe I might even need more. I need to turn it up until this bag inflates. So, and if my bag doesn't want to inflate, I can press this little flange down right here and help it to inflate. All right, so now you see my bag's inflated with 100% oxygen inside that bag. When my patient breathes in, when they breathe in, this little flange right here will lift up. These will close and my patient will breathe in almost 100% oxygen. So patients with this device will get approximately 80 percent oxygen <clears throat> it's not it's not airtight so they don't get a hundred percent but very close so i would use this in somebody who needs a lot of extra oxygen 100 percent that's a lot if i want to use this device as a partial non-rebreather i would simply take these flanges off and now when my patient breathes in my patient breathes in they're breathing in air from this bag that's 100% oxygen, and they're breathing in some room air. Room air is 21% oxygen. It mixes together. And so now my patient is receiving about 60% oxygen. So I am going to make sure that my bag is inflated, that my flow meter is turned on, that the air is able to flow, and then I'm going to put it on my patient making sure that the nose clip is at the nose and the elastic goes around. Right now, it is set up as a partial non-rebreather because the flanges are off. It's giving my patient about 60% oxygen. If I want to give him more oxygen, I would just simply put these flanges back onto the mask. And now, my device is going to give almost 100 percent 80 to 100 percent now in regards to the exact percentages of oxygen for this if you read different medical 
uh, textbooks, or you read your nursing textbooks, different ones will give you different numbers. It's not terribly important that you know the specific percentages of oxygen, because it's different for different patients. But the point is, right now, it's a non-rebreather. It's giving as much oxygen as we can give with this device. If we take the flanges off, it's going to give less. So this device is for your patient who needs a lot of extra oxygen. So that is the non-rebreather and the rebreather means. I'm going to turn our oxygen back off. And we have one more device to look at, and that is the venti mask. A venti mask is used when you have a specific prescription from the healthcare provider to give a specific percent of oxygen. Um, sometimes we see these used in patients who have chronic lung disease like COPD where we want to know exactly how much oxygen the patient is getting. So in this device, you'll see there are several different adapters. They're all different colors. You don't have to memorize which color is which percent of oxygen because it tells you right on the adapter. So I'm going to set up using the yellow adapter, which tells me, I'm going to look at the bottom, and it tells me that that is 28% oxygen. Remember we said that room air is 21%. This is gonna deliver 28%. So I do have to put this together. So I make sure the tubing is all put together. And from here, I have the mask, this tubing here, the fat tubing, and then the adapter. And then this is a little protector the protector goes on here to protect these vents so that they stay open and free from, say, covers like the blanket being over it or anything else getting in the way of air coming into those vents. Because the way this works is in the middle, the oxygen comes through, the vents are open, it pulls in the air from the room, mixes it together in this tubing, and then delivers it here to the patient. So I put my protector on and then I connect my tubing. So here's my tubing, and it told me on the bottom when I read that to set my flow meter at four liters per minute. It's different for each adapter. You have to look at the adapter and it will tell you how to set it up. So I set my flow meter at four. I'm gonna put my mask, make sure it's, the oxygen is flowing. I'm gonna put my mask on my patient, make sure the nose clip is right there over his mouth and under his chin, and then the strap goes around the back of his head. And now it's set up to deliver 28% oxygen. If my doctor had ordered a different percentage of oxygen, like say the doctor ordered 35%, I would find the right adapter that says 35%. The different adapters get different percents of oxygen. All right, so that is all for our oxygen delivery devices. Remember that your nasal cannula is your first line of therapy. Every uh, acute care hospital in this area has a um, standing protocol that the nurse can administer oxygen. You don't have to call the doctor and get an order. If you check your patient and their oxygen saturation is low, you can get the nasal cannula and you can put it on your patient and then you can adjust the flow rate until your patient has an oxygen saturation of 92% or better. If the patient's oxygen saturation is still low, even with a nasal cannula, then you're gonna to have to call the physician and get additional orders. And try, we need to know why is my oxygen saturation low of my patient. There needs to be interventions to correct that. Um, and also to remember the venti mask, is the one that we use when we need to give a specific percent of oxygen. And then finally, the non-rebreather and the rebreather mask are the ones that can deliver the most oxygen. And then each time that you put an oxygen delivery device on your patient, or you change the flow rate, you're gonna check their oxygen saturation because their oxygen level in their body will change very rapidly within seconds. So you are not gonna leave the room sure everything is working properly and set properly and then you've checked your patient's oxygen saturation and it is adequate. All right.
right, that is all for oxygen delivery devices.